Hello, hello, my good people, and thank you for joining this lesson. This is Tim and Familia, and in this video, we're going to look at key biology diagrams you must know before any exams. Without saying much, let us start with the first diagram. So here we have the first diagram. Do you know the name? You can see we have some letters, X, S, T, R, and V. Let us dive into the questions. So the first question is about naming. Name the parts labeled X, T, R, and V. So what is the name of X? So X is known as the right kidney. That is true. What about S? S is called the left kidney. So I have seen that most students confuses between these two. They call X the left kidney and S the right kidney. Kindly note that the left is the right. When you have a diagram like this, the left is to the right and the right is to the left. And therefore, S is the left kidney and X is the right kidney. Part T. T is called the ureter, that is true. R, R is called the urinary bladder, that is correct. Then finally we have V, V is known as the urethra. So we have done with naming, we score those four marks. It is a very easy question. Question number two. State the functions of the following parts. So which parts? Here we have the parts S, T, R, and V. So S is the kidney, remember. So the function of the kidney is to filter waste product from the blood. So it filters waste product like urea from the blood. What about T? You can see T is connecting the kidney and the bladder, and therefore its function is to transport urine, that is to carry urine. It carries urine from the kidney to the renal bladder. So its function is to carry urine to the bladder, from the kidney to the bladder. What about R? R is the bladder. It stores urine temporarily, so temporarily storage of urine. That is true for bladder. And finally, we have a V. V is the urethra. The function of the urethra is to carry urine from bladder to outside the body. You can see it is connected to the bladder and therefore it carries urine from bladder to outside the body. So we are done with stating the functions. Let us continue to question number three. Name two excretory products eliminated through this system. So we have, the first one is, we have urea, that is true. We have excess salts, and we also have what we call excess water. In exam, kindly don't say salt, water. Say excess salt, excess water. So we are done with the first diagram. Let us go on to our second diagram. Here we have the uh, about cells. The first question is asking, name the cell shown. So what is the name of this cell? So we know that this is a plant cell. So the cell shown is a plant cell. What is the reason for your answer? That is the next question. Give a reason for your answer. You know that plant cell, they have a cell wall. That's why we have said it's a plant cell. You can see here we have two walls, the outer wall and the inner wall. So this external wall is called the cell wall and the inner wall, we call it the cell membrane. So when you see a cell wall, then it is a plant cell. Question number two. State two differences between animal cells and plant cells. This is a very common question. So what is the difference? So the first difference is plant cells have a cell wall while animal cells do not have a cell wall. So plant cells have a cell wall while animal cells don't have a cell wall. That one is true. Number two, plant cells have chloroplast. You can see the part labeled P, these are the chloroplast, while animal cells do not have Chloroplast. And the reason for having chloroplast is because you know that plants make their own food through photosynthesis and chloroplast contain chlorophyll, which is essential in the process of photosynthesis. The difference is that plant cells usually have large central vacuole. Animal cells may have small temporary vacuoles. So you can see here, the vacuole is very large. The part labeled R, very large and it is centrally placed. But for animal cell, the vacuoles are small sometimes it is absent. So that's why you're saying temporary vacuoles. Question number three. Name the part labeled K and states its function. So K, you can see K is pointing here. What is the name of K? K is the nucleus. So what is the function of the nucleus? So we have two functions here. The first one is to, it controls all the cell activities such as growth, reproduction, and ETC also carries genetic material, that is the DNA of the cell. So those are the two functions of the nucleus. So controlling all cell activities, but also carrying genetic material of the cell. Question number four. 
Animal cells lack part labeled P. Explain. So remember we said P is the chloroplast. Why do animal cells lack chloroplast? So the reason is because animal cells do not make their own food through photosynthesis, so they do not need chloroplast. They obtain food from external sources. You know that animals, uh, they feed on already manufactured food, we call them heterotrophs, and therefore they don't need chloroplast. So that is the reason we have already explained. Question number five. Explain the functions of the following parts, S, Q, R, and J. So S, remember, cell wall. What is the function? Cell wall provides support, strength, and protection to the cell. Very simple. So cell wall is to sub uh, provide support, strength, and also protection because it is the outer wall. So protects the cell. What about Q? Q is the cytoplasm. You can see Q is pointing here. So cytoplasm provides a site for chemical reaction so when you see c for chemical so c for c so cytoplasm provides a site for chemical reactions what about q so we're done with q we go to r r is the vacuole vacuole stores water food and waste products so you know that the function of the vacuole is to store food water and waste products what about uh, part j j is the cell membrane so cell membrane, the function is to control movement of substances in and out of the cell. So this is, this is the one that controls the movement of substances in and out of the cell. We are done with the plant cell. Let us go on to the next diagram. Here we have the female reproductive system. So you can see you have some parts. We're going to see questions so on this diagram. The first question is asking, identify the parts labeled J, K, M, and N. So J is pointing here, M here, K there, and there. So J is known as the oviduct or the fallopian tube. That is true. What about K? K is pointing here. You can see K is here. K is known as the uterus or the womb. What about M? M is known as the ovary. What about L? L is pointing here. L is known as the cervix. What about N? Remember, we have N. So N is pointing here. Do you know the name of N? Kindly let us know in the comment section. What is the name of the part labeled N? Question number two. Name the process that takes place in the part M every month. So M is the ovary. So what is the process? The name of the process is called, the process is ovulation. So what is ovulation? Is release of a mature egg. So every month the ovary releases a mature egg. That process is called ovulation. We score that two marks. Next question, question number three. State the functions of the part labeled K. So K is the uterus or the womb. So what are the functions of the uterus? The first one is site for implantation. So what do we mean by this? So this is where the fertilized egg implants into the endometrium, which we are calling the uterine lining. So it provides a site for implantation. Another function is Nourishment and protection of embryo or the fetus. So it nourishes the and it nourishes the fetus and also protects the fetus during a developmental stages. So we're going to say it has thick blood ritual, supplies nutrients and oxygen to the developing baby through the placenta, and also provides a safe environment until birth. So those are the main functions of the uterus. Next question. So we are done with the female reproductive system. Just go on to another diagram, a very good diagram, digestive system. Let us see the questions. Name the parts labeled M, N, O, and P. So here you have M pointing here, O, N, and P. So do you know the names? You can try and then check the answers. So M is called the stomach. What about O? O is called the liver. What about N? N is called the large intestine. Then finally, P is one, the one which is highly uh, coiled or folded. We call it the small intestine. Did you get all of them? Let us know. Question number two. State two functions of the organ labeled M. So M is the stomach. What is the function of the stomach? Number one, it stores food temporarily. So that is the first function, storage of food temporarily. Number two. It secretes gastric juice containing hydrochloric acid and enzymes such as pepsin, 
which digest proteins. So that is another uh, function of the uh, stomach to secrete gastric juice containing HCL and the enzymes like pepsin. Question number three. What role does the part labeled O play in digestion? So remember O is the liver. So what is the role of the liver in digestion? Number one, it produces bile, which helps in emulsifying fats. That one is true. So liver produces bile, which is stored in the gallbladder. And the function of the bile juice is to emulsify fats. Another function is to store glycogen and regulate blood sugar level. So that is another function of the liver. I hope you are following. Let me know by liking this video so that I can tell and understand you are following this video. Number four. Why is the part labeled P highly folded and long? So why is it folded? So you know that P is the small intestine. The reason for folding or being coiled is to increase surface area. So to increase the surface area and the time for absorption of nutrients. You know that most nutrients are digested and absorbed here in the small intestine and therefore it is highly folded to increase the surface area and times for absorption of nutrients. State two functions of the part labeled N. N is the large intestine. You know the functions. The first function is to it mainly absorbs water and some salts. You know that most of the water is absorbed in the large intestine and also it compacts and digested food into feces to be excreted from the body. We are done with the digestive system. Let's go to another diagram. This is internal structure of a leaf. We need to see the questions. Identify the, the parts labeled E, G, H, and Y. So what is the name of E? What is the name of G, H, and Y? So E is called the upper epidermis. So is the upper epidermis. We also have the lower epidermis. This one I'm pointing here is called the lower epidermis. You can call it maybe X. So E is the upper and X is the lower epidermis. G is the palisade mesophyll. You can see here. We call it the palisade mesophyll layer. What about H? H is called the spongy mesophyll. And then we go to Y. Y we have it here. We call the guard cells. This controls the opening and the closing of the stoma. So the stoma is this hole. So the guard cells are here to open and close this stoma. Continue to question number two. Explain how the cells at E are adapted to their function. So remember E is the upper epidermis. How is it adapted to its function? The first adaptation is that they are transparent to allow light to penetration. So they are transparent to allow light penetration. So they allow light to penetrate into the photosynthetic cells. So they are transparent to allow light. Another adaptation is that they are closely packed to protect inner tissues. You can see yeah, the arrangement, they are closely packed to each other so that they can protect the inner tissues. And then another adaptation is that it secretes. So the upper epidermis secretes a waxy cuticle to reduce water loss. So those are the ways in which the epidermis is adapted to its function. Number three, give two differences between the cells at G and those at H. So G, the palisade mesophyll, and H, the spongy mesophyll. You can give the differences in terms of the way they are arranged. You can see here, these one are closely packed, these one are loosely arranged. In terms of chloroplast, you can see these black dots are the chloroplast. You can see the palisade mesophyll uh, they have so many chloroplasts compared to the spongy mesophyll. We're going to start with the first difference. Also, the mesophyll, they are tightly packed, you can see, elongated and contain many chloroplasts. And the reason is to trap more sunlight that is used in the process of photosynthesis. That's why they are tightly packed, elongated and containing many chloroplasts. What about spongy mesophyll? They are loosely arranged, you can see, we have some air spaces. The shape is regular for spongy mesophyll and they have fewer chloroplasts. Also, they have large air spaces in between them to allow gaseous exchange. So you can pick from these uh, my points, then you can state the differences. We give two differences between uh, the cells at G and those at H. So you have already mentioned the differences are here uh, mentioned. Next question. What is the function of the structures labeled Y? So Y these are the guard cells. What is the function of the guard cells? Guard cells controls the opening and the closing of the stomata. That is true. And then another function is 
regulate gaseous exchange in transpiration. So the stomata, the gut cells are the ones that regulate gaseous exchange and also transpiration by opening and closing the stomata. Number five, name two main tissues that make up the part labeled Y and state their functions, so their roles. So you can see the part labeled Y, you don't have Y, it's supposed to be the part labeled F, not Y. So it is supposed to be F, sorry for that, not Y. So you know that in F we have the vascular bundles, the xylem and the phloem. So those are the tissues that make up the part labeled F. I've said this one is F, not Y. So what is the function of the xylem? Xylem transport water and mineral salt from the roots to the leaves. That is true. What about phloem? Phloem transport manufactured food from leaves to other parts of the plant. Those are the two main functions of the xylem and the phloem. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share to your family. Stay curious, stay learning.